everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit session. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Today I'm coming at you with session 53, and on today's session I have Adele Bridges on the show. I had the pleasure of hosting Adele here at my house while she was visiting San Francisco and teaching workshops. So we get to hang out for a few days, and um, as we were just kind of chatting in conversation, I was asking her about what it's like to be nomadic and to travel all the time and how that was, and so we got to talk about it. The, the thing I love about this episode is we actually get to do it face-to-face, and most of the people that I interview on the show, it's always um, an internet call or something like that, so we got to like hang out and chat, and it was, it was just a really great way to, to bring the show to light. She's doing and some really, really, really awesome, cool stuff. And she's all over the place. We get into just like the, the good and the bad of, of doing the international traveling yoga teacher thing. As always, I'd like to thank our friends over at SF Yoga Magazine for all their continued support. If you like the show, please leave a review on iTunes. It helps other people find the show and feel free to share it online. And we're also on Spotify. So let your tribe know. Without further ado, here is session 53. Adele, what do you think about my fancy my fancy podcasting studio? I'm super impressed, Danny. Do you want to describe to the listeners what this podcasting studio looks like? Well, it's very homely. <laughs> um, you've got a bed in your <laughs> podcast studio. Um, in fact, it looks quite a lot like a bedroom. It, yeah, yeah. It's you know, I just never know when I'm podcasting. You know, I might want to take a nap and. So it's my bedroom. It's very yeah. practical. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I think, maybe only the second time I've ever had. I don't think I've actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever, I can't recall if I've had someone face-to-face do a podcast recording with me. This is definitely the first, like, actually face-to-face yeah, yeah, podcast I mean, interview. We're looking at each other we're in the like, eyes right yeah. now. We're connecting. We're, we're eye-gazing. <laughs> Okay, so Adele's been hanging out at my house in San Francisco, and uh, she's in town. She's been in town this weekend because she was teaching, and we got introduced to our mutual friend Christian, who's kind of only like shout out to Christian. Hey, what's up, Christian? <laughs> Yay, we love you. Um, and yeah, we've just been like talking and kind of hanging out, and like we we're just, just a second ago we we're hanging out in the kitchen talking about Instagram and how frustrating it is, and mm. you know. And then earlier I was like, oh, well, I should get you on the podcast. Like it'd be fun to to chat and what. I wanted to talk to you about was obviously we kind of got into the conversation of you being nomadic and so last night we co-taught together and on our walk home I don't mind I hope you don't mind I'm sharing but no. you were like I really miss having you said I love meeting all these new people around the world that's like super fun and exciting and you're like but I also miss having um, that place to come home to and to teach so been traveling for how long teaching yoga now well I started traveling last January so more than a year yeah January 2017 so okay so yeah, however many months that is. It's um, like a year and nine, ten months now, almost. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. It's been wonderful. I I think back to all of the places that I've been, all of the things that I've been able to experience, mm-hmm. and like my memories are very colorful. Like, yeah, you know, just so many rich experiences and memories, especially places like Sri Lanka and India and Bali. That you know, they are just. I don't know. I can't help it, but I think of my my memories as very colorful. But, yeah. Um. So I'm so grateful for it, and it's all kind of brought me to where I am now. Like yeah. Anything else? Yeah. But. It for me, I feel like it looks uh, just in you know like looking at your Instagram and, and obviously getting to know you. I know that it is a very fun and exciting time, but I. I saw firsthand, you know, when you first got here, you were like, what day is it? What time is it? And what time zone am I in? You know, and I think there is this common theme that, you know, like traveling yoga teachers have this like glamorous lifestyle and it's just all rainbows and kittens and butterflies. And the truth is there's actually a little bit of a downside to it as well. You know, you sacrifice a lot of your own personal life. You sacrifice a lot of your relationships. You sacrifice family time you sacrifice some health stuff because you're traveling like what's let's I want to talk about that stuff like what are the things that sometimes you're just like oof yeah I think that it's it is important to highlight that because I mean don't get me wrong I you know it's it's been Mm -hmm. a fabulous time and and I still want to keep traveling but yeah we need balance and everything and the lifestyle that I've had has been 
where everything is temporary. Relationships are temporary. The time that I get to spend with the, the people who come to my workshops is temporary. So everything has a has a beginning and an ending that, that are very, very close together, you know? It's like, hello, goodbye, hello, right. goodbye, hello, goodbye, constantly. So yeah, I'm kind of feeling now I need to find a balance mm-hmm. between the adventurousness and uncertainty of traveling and that kind of just well, having a routine and having a little bit of certainty and, right. and a community and and a place that's my own. Yeah. Let's talk about like more like the health aspects of it because, mm. I mean, you travel, everyone knows this, Traveler's Digestion, you guys, you travel like over, you know, a couple yeah. hours or, you know, whatever it is and your entire inside gets thrown off and then yeah. you're, you know, you're out for a couple of days and then you ha- you're introducing new foods into your body. You don't necessarily have all your supplements mm. or, you know, you're your favorite smoothies or whatever it is, you know, like what's the hardest part of that? And then what do you do to remedy that? And what do you do to go to to work around it? Because I'm sure at this point you've, I mean, almost two years now, nonstop. Well, that, that is the hardest part for me. And I think that some people, maybe they just are stronger. They have Mm -hmm. maybe a stronger gut or a stronger, just, I don't know, immune system or whatever. Cause I know other people that travel as much as I do and they don't mm-hmm. seem to have these problems or maybe I'm just more open about it like I, <laughs> I was like telling you about my um my digestive issues yesterday yeah. I got um, you girl we're homies <laughs> um can we talk about poop on yeah. this podcast so you can say you can say shit if you wanted to <laughs> okay um yeah so for me it, it's it's been one of the hardest parts about traveling and uh, one of the biggest reasons that I know that I need to slow down because Mm. it is, I think a lot of people don't think about it, but first of all, it's completely unnatural to go up in the air in an airplane (laughs) and then land, you know, several hours later on a different continent where the air is different, the water is different, and obviously the food is different. And yes, a tomato is a tomato in Spain or in California, but the bacteria, the little microbiomes and everything on there are are different and that stuff affects you. And the yeah digestive issues that have then led to lots of skin issues for me that's been oh yeah i didn't even think about that yeah been, well yeah. yeah i mean really if if your digestion is off if your if your gut is not in balance right. then it's going to it's going to throw off uh your hormones your and if your hormones are off then everything's off basically like everything everything goes back to the gut right that's why you know i i know you know that because i saw you're making your own kombucha yeah sure i am Um, (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah so for me i actually um i got myself a functional doctor Mm -hmm. um i saw a few different naturopaths as i was traveling around the world but they all said like i can't do much if you're leaving tomorrow right so then i i got in touch with an, um, a functional doctor in London and went to see her as soon as I could and then even after I've been traveling she just kind of like mails me supplements and like keeps in touch with me wherever I am and, yeah. and she'll be like okay uh, sounds like you're doing all right but you need to go find an acupuncturist wherever you are like just go find an acupuncturist right. and, and tell tell them to do this and, and I'm like okay so that's that's really helped a lot mm-hmm. because yeah she's just helped me kind of get my gut back in balance i think i picked up a few um a few bugs along the way yeah i did a small tour nowhere near like what you know you do a lot of international stuff and i did um i think i did my first tour thing in 2016 and i had i think it was like maybe three back-to-back weekends and then i had a couple week breaks and then i had another like couple back-to-back weekends and for me, that was intense for me having to leave on a Friday and come back on a Monday and, you know, start teaching on Monday night. was just like, it threw me off. Although it was really fun and exciting, but like my body, my body got thrown off and it really, it affected some other areas in life. Like just like, you know, coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. It kind of almost made me in that mentality of like, I'm just going to come and go and and everywhere that I go, because I'm just going to be gone anyway. So it's fine. Yes. Actually, I've found myself like I've become like a different person because yeah. you do have that mentality it's like everywhere you go you know that you're gonna meet people and they're awesome wonderful glorious people but you have kind of the same conversations with them right over and over you know it's, it's always the same questions asked and and everything and then it's like just as you maybe start to connect with them it's like okay well 
bye. Right. Maybe I'll see you again at some right. point, but maybe not. And then you start all over again, and that gets tiring. It's, what do and you... I actually find I, I kind of, I find that I often close myself off just to save that energy. Yeah, that's, I was going to actually, I was going to say, like, Which what... Which is not like me at all. What do you, I mean, what do you do to, I guess... Maybe yeah, protect yourself or your your emotions or your feelings because there's got to be this idea of giving that connection to somebody else and then it's like being ripped away, you know, almost, I, I don't know. Uh, is it too dramatic to say like you got a new puppy and then your, your puppy gets taken away and you're like, ah, you know? Sometimes some of the people that I've that I've met have felt like, yeah, little puppy dogs um, yeah. that I just want to keep in my life. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm very close with my family, especially my sisters. And so... We talk every day mm-hmm. and it doesn't even have to be like, oh, hey, there, like, like even like a formal like phone conversation. It's like I might just send my sister a snap of me making a funny face and she'll respond back. And it's just, you know, she respond, Adele, you get back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. She's she does have a little bit of an accent. It's not quite that. I was bad. giggling when I found out yesterday you were from Mississippi. I'm, I'm from the South. Y'all. She's from the South, I'm, y'all. Yeah, I just, <laughs> my, my accent comes back if I spend a bit of time there. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time, because you have, you know, you've spent so much time in Wales. Like yeah. you spent, you definitely have a little bit of that. You pick it up. It's natural, yeah. right? I thought I speak I was Welsh. Like, yeah, you definitely you you sound like you're you're from there. And then and then when you were like, I'm actually from Mississippi. I was like, well, bless your heart. Yeah. <laughs> So I think, and I'm sure you meet these people all the time. I'm sure they come up to you and, or they Instagram you and they say, Hey, oh my God, I want to travel the world too and and travel and teach yoga. You know, it's so great. What do you, I have a list of things that I would say to those people and not even having traveled the entire world to to teach things. But what do you say to those people? Like both the good and the bad things, because there is, there's two even hand baskets there, you know, and, and they, they, they weigh the same. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I still get asked that so often. I'm thinking I should like write a book or something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I definitely encourage people to do it. Yeah. Because I don't tell them the bad because I think it's something that if, if somebody wants to do it, then they should go do it and not let the bad stop them. Because even though, yeah, it's not, it's not all fun and giggles and easygoing, all of the challenges, like they're the best part. Yeah. Yeah. They're the best part. Like, there's like there's no amount of like university education or yoga teacher training or whatever kind of like formal education out there that can teach you what you learn when you arrive in like a third world country and you think that there's going to be a train that you can get on um, to get to where you need to go and actually that train's not there and you have to spend the night sleeping like in. A, the train station in the middle of some little town in Sri Lanka. Um, Can you tell that that actually happened? Party. (laughs) Um, Yay. um, That's the kind of stuff that is the best thing about traveling. But if I, I think if I tell people that, then it might put them off and I don't want to put anybody off from traveling. What's the, I I was going to say, what's the biggest thing? So actually you just need to cut all of that that I just said. Right. Totally. Totally. So the show's (laughs) over. Um, um, Great. Great job. We'll see you guys later until the next episode. Bye. (laughs) And then now the, the, the brainwash part of the show, you did not hear any of that. Yes. We're traveling world yoga teachers. It's fine. Traveling is nothing but glamorous excitement. Rainbows and butterflies. (laughs) I don't know why I did the Jason sound, but whatever. I was was thinking hypnotizing. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you guys, it's so fun to have someone next to me. <laughs> Normally, I'm just sitting here by myself. I get lonely. <laughs> All right. What has been one of the hardest points in this last year and 10 months? Like, you were just like, why am I doing this? Like, do you, do you recall a moment you were just like, shit? Yeah, actually, two. Okay. Two. So, one is at the... At the very beginning, mm-hmm. I actually started um, my completely nomadic traveling thing, traveling with Dylan, um, my friend Dylan Werner. Yep. I yep. assisted him. And so the first like six weeks that I was with him, they were easy because I just was just going along with him. Right. And then he went to carry on with his nomadic lifestyle and I right. stayed in Nicaragua. And, and it was an it interesting was, place to stay. <laughs> and it went, well, we went from like, 
you know, we were hanging out together like all day, every day for six right. weeks. And then he's gone. And I was just like all on my own. And, you know, in this beautiful resort and uh, like lovely people and stuff. But that's when I was like, oh, my gosh, I left my comfortable little life where I had a steady income and I had friends and I had a home and like and I would just wake up at night with this this crushing weight on my chest just Mm. thinking what have I done and and I think the worst part of it was I was afraid of what other people might think Mm. that you know everybody knew everybody all of my friends knew you know it was all over Instagram that I was traveling around the world and like what if I can't do this and I have to show up back in Wales and you know knock on the door and be like can I come home right I don't know every time I had like a restless, a sleepless night like that, Mm -hmm. the next day I would just get up and go do my thing, you know, go teach yoga and go talk to people. And, and I would just get like an email or somebody, I would just meet somebody randomly and it would lead to some opportunity. And, and I just, I learned very quickly that there's, there's always opportunities if you're open to it. Mm. And every time over the next few months, like the first few months that I was traveling solo, if I had like a an open week, there would be like this bit of anxiety, like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing that week. But inevitably, it would fill up with something right. somehow. Like, it just like it happened. What was the second point then? That's that's the point one. I'm, I'm point, anxious to hear point two. The second point is like kind of where I'm at now. Ah. Because I have um, secrets revealed. <laughs> um, I'm moving. You heard it here first. <laughs> We've got the exclusive. The exclusive on Adele, um, on Adele Bridges. Um, more, after, more after this break. <laughs> I've, I've, um, I've got a flat in London uh, that I'm going to be moving into, but it's not available yet. The previous tenants are not moving out until the middle of October. And so I was like, okay, that's fine. That works. I've still got some traveling to do, so I'll just go and keep traveling, and then I'll move in when the flat's available but now it's like knowing that I've got this life that I've been craving for the last few months waiting for me right I can't it's like almost every well several times a day I'm thinking like oh I just can't wait to get into my flat yeah and it's really hard I've made a conscious decision and I'm making a conscious effort to just be present be present be present Present. um jet lag you guys it's a thing (laughs) um and Maybe subconsciously I want to be the president. Maybe. You'd do a better job, I'm sure. I think anybody would do a better job. Goldfish would do a better job. Um, anyway. Same. What was I talking about? You're, you I'm trying be to be president. president of the United States. I'm trying to be president and just enjoy these last few weeks of, yeah. of being a traveling nomad. But it's like all of the little things that are just a little bit annoying. Yeah. Um, instead of just kind of taking them as part of the lifestyle, which I did before and now, I know that those won't be a part of my life soon. And so it's like, mm. ugh. I can't wait to have my own flat. And so it's, I'm, it's actually, yeah. yeah it's, I didn't realize I was catching right the tail end of your, your big travels. Oh, did I not tell you that? No, I had no idea. Oh, I thought you were just yeah. like still bouncing around. Yeah. You're one of my last like couches. To I on. feel so like honored. Like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. For letting me stay with you. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. It's, on your couch. it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. We've got to hang out and, and yeah. yeah, just act silly, which is super, it's yeah. always fun to meet new, I don't know. I love it, but it, 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 you've now known me for a good 48 hours and I could talk to a brick wall and have a great time. <laughs> Has it really only been 48 hours? I feel like I've known you for months. I'm same. Yeah. We're roommates, right? We live together. Yeah. You live in the front room. I live yeah. in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make me coffee in the morning <laughs> or afternoon or whatever it was. Yeah. Okay. The biggest piece of advice you give to someone that wants to do this is what? Besides, I know you said like, for sure, you're going to tell someone to go do it. But what's the biggest piece of advice? Like the one thing that you weren't told that you wish someone told you when you were like getting ready to do this? I think just just trust that everything does work out. Mm. The biggest piece of advice, actually, though, that I tell most people is something that I stole from somebody else that told me. And that was like, uh, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Um, I asked um, a traveling yoga teacher, Matthew Baldwin. I don't know if you know him. He's French. But I asked him, I was like, how did you do it? I uh-huh. want to be a traveling yoga teacher. How, how do you do it? Right. Um, and he just looked me in the eye and he said, I bought a flight. And I was like, oh. Huh. 
damn, it's that easy, is it? Right. Because that's it. I think I think people often want to complicate it. Like you have to, you, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have like this much money in the bank, and you gotta like write to studios and tell them that you're coming. Or like I don't know. Like no, if you want to go somewhere, just get your ass there. Right. Because I mean, especially places like Bali and mm-hmm. Nicaragua, Guatemala, Costa Rica. You know. India, Sri Lanka, like these these cool places where all the yogis go. Right. You you show up there. There are straight away. There are people that mm-hmm. want to talk to you, and and you just figure it out because there's just amazing people everywhere you go. Right. And right. as long as you're not afraid to just talk to other human beings, then yeah, you just figure it out. It just all happens. Nice. I still don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it then. I do like, but there are times that there, there are some times where I'm like, yeah, I do, but I, I like doing little seasons of travel. Like yeah, festival season was really fun for me this year. Oh my God. I had a great summer. Like it was summer in San Francisco sucks. Everyone knows it. Anyone listening to this in San Francisco, you guys know what's up, but it's summer in San Francisco is terrible. Every weekend this summer I was out somewhere sunny. So I got to go to like the Midwest a few times. I got to go to the East coast. I was down South. Like I just got to go to a bunch of really awesome places here and enjoy like really beautiful weather. And after like six weeks of like traveling every weekend, I was like back home and, you know, and then I'm I'm here for a little bit. So, and I like to say my second home is Costa Rica because I lead trainings down there every, you know, two, three times a year. I'm down there two weeks at a time. So I get the best of both worlds. I get what you want. (laughs) I get like, I get to go down there and come back. I think that's, that's the best way to do it is to figure out like where that balance is for you. I mean, and it's different for everybody. I mean, like Dylan, for example, he's still nomadic. He's been doing it for like three or four years. Yeah. It obviously works for him just fine. But for me, I think like I'm kind of planning something similar where I'll have my base in London and I'll be there for the majority of the time. I'll build a little community there, have a group of friends that I see more often than one week out of the year. Yeah. But then I'll still travel like the winters suck in London. So right. I, you know, I'm going to be in Bali for all of February. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, by London. I'll see you when the sun comes back. Totally. Out. Come to Bali in March for my retreat. Come hang out while we're okay. there. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm running a retreat in Sri Lanka in March. All right. But all right. maybe I'll bounce back over to Bali. I'm, I mean, I'm down. Just saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <It'd be> fun. <laughs> I think like I, for me, like the way if I could see it going somewhere, like I want to continue to do my trainings, which we were talking about off, you know, obviously off the podcast, but it's really where I, I love, I love teaching people. I love seeing minds expand and like, I love, I personally hate academia for me. Like I can't go to a school and classroom and sit down, but like being able in the yoga context, when we get to look at so many things and be up and moving, I love that. I wish school was normally like that, but, um, I want I agree. I would I would have learned so much better if school was like that. I want to continue to bring my training, you know, both my 200 and my five, my new 500 hour program to places where I could go, you know, a few weeks out of the year and, you know, go teach different modules of it and then come back home, you know, a la Kia Miller, or Jason Crandall or Noah Maze, you yeah. know, where they, they have these really awesome, really solid educational programs. They love teaching. You can tell they're passionate for it. They get to go and be away for a little bit, but then come home. You know, that's yeah. like that's you last night we were talking and and you were saying write down my goals and in my head I was like that's I, I didn't even think about it until you said it but that's totally one of my goals is to bring my training programs to a couple places that I love and then be able to come back home and have, yeah. them, have them thrive here and have them thrive there and like boom that's it that's what I want Woo-hoo. yeah I know thank you for that you're very welcome <laughs> Well, it's been, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, we're talking after this because you're still here. Normally I hang up and don't get to talk to the person afterwards, but is there anything else you want to say to the listeners before we, we sign off for this session? Um, well, I guess come to my retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's it? Tell me about your retreat. Um, well, there's a, there's a retreat that I'm running along with a couple of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, Celeste, Perrier, Jake Paul White, and um, Kelly um, mix something. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Kelly mix something. Uh, and um, yeah, in Bali, it's for yoga teachers. We're going to be um, kind of like giving everybody what they need to create their own online content. Oh, cool. Um, so it's going to be a super fun retreat based around that for yoga teachers. But then I'm also running my own just on just just me in Sri Lanka. 
And the thing that I'm doing with that is once everybody books on, then they'll get to choose like what workshops I teach them. So, oh, cool. Um, Cause yeah, like if it's, it, it doesn't even have to be yoga related. It might be like how to take a nice photo on your phone for Instagram right, or, right. or how to travel the world. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, so that'll be cool. And if you need to like see more from me you can just go to my website i'll make sure that i put all of your info in the show notes so people will have your instagram and they'll have your website and all the yeah, stuff that goes that's with way it. more coherent than me trying to talk about it right now <laughs> still jet lagged super jet lagged <laughs> and we got to go teach yoga together right now oh, yeah <laughs> yeah we got to go teach a class thank you again for just spending the time on the show with me and for hanging out Thanks and for, for eye, ga- eye gazing with me right now you guys it's so intense yeah. <laughs> um, until the next yogi misfit session this is danny and adele saying peace out peace out